Okay, we are going to tie another variation of the famous Unsinka beetle. Now, it's an awesome fly that actually my mom and I designed together. She didn't really design much, but she helped me uh, push it underwater because I was helping her remodel her house and uh, had a bowl of water on her counter and she would push it down every day for two weeks and it still didn't sink. So there are some critical parts of this fly that if you if you don't tie it properly won't float quite as well. So we'll show that to you. Um, also, this is a size four hook. So this is obviously designed to, to be a, a larger beetle pattern, um, maybe to be fished in South America. Hint, hint, Curtis. No. So um, anyway, this is going to be a black coloration. So I'm using uni eight aught or uni six aught thread in black, and the shell of this is going to be this uh, evazote foam. It's I think the three sixteenths. Now I'm going to cut it fairly wide, so a little bit wider even than the hook gap. Let's see, there you go. <clears throat> I'm going to come up here. And there's going to be kind of a two-thirds, one-third thing on this fly where the first third of it's going to be the head and the back two-thirds are going to be the body. So I'm going to start the tie-in point right here. Um, that's one thing with, with foam. A lot of people tie, cut it to points to tie it in. You don't need to do that because if you just, uh, I'm laying it kind of on the far side of the hook. If I just come around here like this and then cinch it down, that kind of ties it in exactly how I want it to be tied in. So I'll, I'll put quite a few thread wraps here and then just kind of spiral, spiral my thread back. You want to go pretty far back on this one. You want to maximize that, that shank on this, this hook. So once I'm here, I'm just going to cinch that foam down really, really well. If you don't do this, then the fly will spin um, and that gets annoying. It'll still fish fine but you'll have to adjust it every cast <clears throat> okay now this is a more dense foam and it's a two millimeter just regular fly tying foam and I'm going to cut kind of a thin strip of it maybe for reference two-thirds of the hook gap in width and I will tie that in up here as well and really bind that down now on this one you have to be really careful not to uh, pull it too tight back here because if you pull it too tight when you go to wrap this it will break so looser wraps back here then come up here and just go full savage like Curtis eating a pepperoni pizza just get after it and from here, I'm going to start wrapping this foam. Now for this first wrap, to avoid the tearing, I'm going to help it with my finger and just kind of bend it around the, the hook kind of lightly a little bit. And then I'll pull it a little bit tighter. And I'll wrap this up the hook shank. This is a Gamakatsu S10 hook. And the reason I chose it because it has a little bit wider gap than normal. Um, because as you can see, this two mil foam really eats it up. Okay, so now I'm going to tie that off. You see how I did that? I kind of tied it off in the middle of that wrap. So once I'm here, I'm going to trim off my excess. And then I'm, I'm going to bind that foam down about right there. So from here, if I take this foam and pull it really tight, um, it might lose a little bit of the air. So I'm just going to kind of lay that over gently, kind of squeeze it around, and then tie it off. So you can see that's the back of the body of that beetle. Um, it adds the segmentation, all 100% foam, and uh, very floaty. From here, I'm going to take my thread, advance it to right behind the eye, 
I'm going to take my foam and kind of lightly stretch it and pinch it right behind the eye and use several wraps and tie that down right behind the eye. And then I'll tie those foam wraps down. You can use any dubbing for this, uh, but I really like just ice dub. This is black ice dub. Is it black UV or just black? I think it's black UV. Yeah, well, just some darker shade of dub. You want to kind of get that bulky. Alright, so we've created the head of the beetle with that. <clears throat> and now I'm going to fold this back, and kind of pull it a little bit tight, and tie it down. And you can see that creates kind of the perfect round head. To create the eyes on this, I'm going to take my thread and cross it over the head and behind this eye. And then back, see if I can do this without looking at it back over and tighten it down. Does that make sense? I'm going to do it while I'm looking and see if it looks better. So you can see it creates two little buggy eyes on each side. That's still not even. Yeah it is. Even enough. Alright so once once the head is completed on this, I'm going to take this lay my scissors down on top of the body and pull it up and snip it. I almost cut the head right here. So I think I saved it. But anyway, if you pull that and, and snip it, it will suck down in to itself. Okay, so now I'm gonna tie in some wings. I'm using just the original EP fibers. I would use trigger point if it were a smaller fly since it's a size 4 I want a little bit of coarseness and these wings don't really help with the, the flotation much they just kind of give an appearance of a struggling beetle so what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie in a hank of this hair right on one side of the beetle like that and then I'm just going to take this extra piece that's hanging over the head and fold it back onto the other side. Just like that. So now if I pull those wings and cut them just a little bit longer than the body, I'm going to have two little outrigger wings that give a good appearance of struggulation. Is that a word? Exactly. Yep. Now for an indicator, and yes, it does need an indicator because sometimes they sit low or there might be a lot of bubbles on the water that are white you can't see the wings so we'll throw a little bit of yellow here this is just two mil craft foam we'll trim it about like that now on the original Ancinca beetle I doctored up the legs colored them all up and because this is a bigger size beetle I'm actually gonna put four legs on each side one with a natural and brown, and the other with red barred with black. So I'll just grab these and tie them in both at the same time. And then loop them around to the front. And do the same thing. And you can see that that loop's not very big, so I can I can adjust the, the length of those front legs if I need to. Alright, now that everything's tied in, I'll just take some dubbing and finish up, kind of cover up my thread wraps. Okay, so you can see on the bottom, it's just 
dubbing, not really much thread showing even though it's hard to see because it's black. And at this point I'll trim the, the legs. And in order to whip finish this fly, I'm going to take my thread and I'm going to run it down this little trough that I made for the eyes and get to the hook eye. Does that make sense? So again, I'm going to run this down that little groove, get to the eye of the hook, and do a real quick whip finish. Okay, so the only thing left is to trim the legs. So I'm going to take these legs and push them all forward. Just like that, kind of clump them all together and trim them all at the same time. And now we should have pretty uniform legs. And then on this one, <clears throat> I like to cement it in two places. I like to put a little bit right behind the eye. And then some right back here where a lot of those thread wraps are. Anyway, that's the Unsinka Beetle size 4 version for those monster beetles that are in your stream. Anyway, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Smash the bell, whatever that means, so that you can get notifications of us talking and tying Unsinka Beetles in the future.